We're ready. Come in, Tempest 2. That's a new one on me. A normal anti-tank cannon would need a dozen rounds to stop a big fellow like that. That's incredible. It stopped with one blast. And it's at low power. Don't forget that, please. Notice the treads on the tank, practically glued to the very spot. Do you really mean you can get even greater power out of that thing? Yes, certainly. The power can be increased, believe me. What we've just shown you is its minimum possible force. Now we'll juice it up a bit for you, Senator. All right? This is insane. A nuclear missile couldn't annihilate a tank just like that. <laughs> it's extraordinary. I know what the factory claimed you could do, but I didn't believe it. Manufactured by Sphinx, isn't it? Yes, that's right. They were absolutely unwilling to give us this prototype. Until they were satisfied it was ready. Seems perfectly usable right now. Yeah, you know these scientific types. They are never tired of tinkering around. I'd like to know how it works at maximum level. There's one thing I want to know. What happened to the occupants of that first tank? They'd never be able to survive, but that tank was radio operated. All right, you've seen how this weapon works when aimed by sight. More or less like a conventional anti-tank field piece. Go ahead and stick on that special gizmo. And now, we're going to take you into the realm of science fiction. Lieutenant, transmit the order to the third tank to proceed. There, behind the reinforced concrete barrier. Yes, sir. I've been keeping an eye on this baby's progress ever since it left the cradle. But I admit I'm still not used to it. Fire! Round one, sir. Lookout tower communicates that a faint light hit the flank of the objective in movement. Disintegration of the object was complete and immediate. Well, gentlemen, I'm certainly not going to ask you to take my word for it. We'll examine it, and you'll be able to see it for yourself. The force, the devastation of this explosion, which, of course, is no explosion at all. What is it, then? As you know, it's a question of ultrasonic rays. Our USR, ultrasound rifle, transmits to the point of contact a quantity of these rays at an extremely dense concentration. These rays will destroy any type of material and will kill any sort of living organism. In this case, the tanks were driven by remote control. But what would have happened to a human crew if there had been one in there? Instantaneous death through bone decalcification.
You're always sitting here reading the comics. <laughs> huh. Research. The new generation of criminals look to the comics for inspiration. Oh. What do you want? Oh. Simon is here again. He wants to know if you're going to be needing the taxi. If I need it, I'll call him. If I don't call him, that means I don't need it. Huh. That's what I told him. The professor's reading and doesn't want to be disturbed. But you know Simon. He won't take no for an answer. The kid's a real go-getter. Do I detect a trace of sarcasm in your answer? Sarcasm is the last refuge of the wicked. I thought you might be bored in this hole. Oh. I have my cab outside. Maybe you feel like taking a ride. You take a ride. And don't call my hotel a hole. Hey. Hey, Chief, that's nice. Disappear. Oh, well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'm leaving. I can tell I'm not appreciated around here. Hold it. Huh? I have a strange feeling. Professor! Telephone! It's Mr. Winterbottom calling from London! I'd love to know who invented the telephone. You stay here. Aye, aye, sir. Yes? Jack, this is Winterbottom. You can't imagine how thoroughly delighted I am to hear the sound of your voice. Got problems? That's an understatement. I feel as if I was sitting on top of a volcano. What can I do for you? There's a plane on its way to pick you up with a client who'll explain everything. What's it about? Can you give me an idea? Not over the phone. All I can say is that it's a big one. A client of ours could be ruined, destroyed, and we could all lose our shirts. You taking me with you this time? I don't even know where I'm going and what I have to do. Better. More interesting. I've never liked those package tours. If I need you, I'll call you. Well, since Winterbottom wasn't willing to tell me anything, it would help if we could cover a few of the details. All I know is it's about a weapon. Yes. A weapon of terrifying potential. I would define it as the ultimate weapon, because there is no defense against it. Someone's managed to get a hold of the blueprints? Worse. It's so unpleasant. I have trouble talking about it. I'll have to know more, or I won't be able to help. The prototype was stolen. We uh, started our descent into Rome. We should be landing in about 15 minutes. De Prune, the man who invented the weapon, had taken it home the previous evening to check out one of the mechanisms. Wait a minute. Are you telling me it wasn't working? Unfortunately, no. It's in perfect working order. The target has to be in sight, but the effects are just as damaging. Oh, hello, Fred. This Morning, is Mr. Sir. Jack Clementi. He's an architect. Hi. Sure. He's here to study a plan for the reconstruction of the Yes, plant. I got word from the front office. Sorry, Mr. Clementi. Your regulations, I'm going to have to search you. Go right ahead. I'm used to it. I visit a lot of factories like this. Considering the times we live in, everyone should undergo a search. A careful one. Do me a favor, Mr. Clementi. When you're making changes, don't forget our security needs. Uh, we'll turn this all into a little Fort Knox. <laughs> this ID card will allow you to go anywhere in the plant. Keep it in sight and uh, have a good day. Okay, Later. thanks. Why don't you come with me? I want to show you the factory. Fine. Body search was for the benefit of the guards, not for Fred. He knows all about you. His men haven't been told anything. We have 30 security guards and 50 TV cameras. I'm sure you're wondering how the thieves ever managed to get in. Actually, I'm thinking about the weapon, where it is, and what they want to do with it. The rest is secondary. One little piece of advice. Don't call the police. What do you want us to do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just wait around like good little children, and we'll get back to you when the time is right. 
we have followed their orders to the letter, except that we took it upon ourselves to get in touch with you, Mr. Clemente. That's not enough. I'm a private citizen. You should have gotten on the phone and started contacting everybody. Armed forces, police, civil protection groups. We don't want to create a panic. I just don't understand. From an insurance point of view, the insurance company won't pay until you've reported the theft. We have considered that. Mr. Chairman, I believe we should be honest with Mr. Clemente. Our hands are tied. The patent has been sold to the Ministry of Defense. You could say we're working directly for them. If this gets out, it could blow our contracts out the window. The Sphinx Company would be ruined. Uh, could we take a look at that videotape? to take a look at the vault that the weapon in question was stolen from. Of course. De Groon, will you and Nade show Mr. Clemente the vault? Certainly, sir. Just out of curiosity, was it normal for you to walk out of here with the homing device in your pocket? How dare you? For us, it was perfectly normal. It's Dr. De Croon's brainchild, after all. However, De Croon, you must understand that we're here to answer questions. Give my outburst. This robbery has made us all somewhat jittery. Excuse me a minute. Hello? I'd like to speak to Lloyd's International of London. Uh, Mr. Winterbottom's office. Yes, thank you. I'll wait. So in your opinion, while we're sitting here, invisible to the outside world, protected by walls, security equipment, and security guards, someone somewhere could blow us uh, into smithereens, even if you were four miles away? Yes, if that someone had the homing device. Hmm. Thank God he doesn't have it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Winterbottom. How are you? I'm here in the plant along with our friends. Yeah, the thieves have pulled off an impressive robbery, but no one's perfect. Well, I think I picked up a very important lead. And with any kind of luck, I should have the case solved in something like uh, a couple of days. Damn good show, Jack. Keep me abreast of developments. Of course. I'll keep you informed. I say, Jack, this time our client is Sphinx. And I assure you that if you solve this case, 
Lloyds will be extremely grateful. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye. Well then, Mr. Clementi, shall we take a look at the vault? I take you. Are you a physicist also, like Dr. DeCrew? No, I'm an electronics engineer. But I didn't turn off the alarm system, if that is what you are implying. Uh, gentlemen, I think we should try to get a grip on our nerves. Mr. Clementi is here on our behalf to solve a problem that has got us all extremely upset. Perhaps it would be better to put off the visit to the vault till tomorrow. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a chat in private with our guest. Please sit down. You don't seriously suspect those two, do you? Nadia has been with us a long time. A solid man. Well, what about Dr. Ducroux? A new acquisition. But a lot of NATO countries would just love to lure him away from us. Why did you ask him about his having taken the homing device with him? Because it's a strange coincidence. He pockets the device on the same night the weapon is stolen. Surely that should be enough to clear his name. Were he in cahoots with the thieves, he wouldn't have taken the homing device away. Consider another point of view. He wasn't cahoots with the thieves at the start, but something, well, changed his mind. So he decided to try and limit the damage at least and took the device home. That sounds impossible. You mentioned to Winterbottom that you had picked up an important lead. I hope he didn't mean anything about our two men. A bit of a lead, yes. Only not that important. I don't understand. The robbery was organized in the plant. Inside job. You got a mold in here. Incoming outgoing calls are obviously logged. So I put a little time bomb in somebody's ear. So you've set yourself up as bait. It's the only way to bring them out into the open.
attack on you, if nothing else, at least proves you're right. The robbery was an inside job. It seems impossible, but I guess that's the way it is. You'll have to be careful from now on, even when you're talking with each other. What will you do now? Question the personnel? Let them go on thinking that we're still just groping our way around in the dark. Our man may make a wrong move. Send this memo out immediately. Yes, sir, right away. When is it? What do you mean, what is it? It's a bottle. A dock, an old Bordeaux. Oh. Worthy of an old fart like you, mm. even though you can't tell the difference between wine and coke. What am I supposed to do with it? You drink it. It's a gift. You didn't think I'd call in such a distinguished son of a bitch uh, empty-handed, did you? Distinguished, yeah. You're trying to be funny? Just seeing you showing up with a gift is enough to make me suspicious. There's a saying, you know, that ah. goes... <laughs> Come on. I know about Greeks bearing gifts. But I'm not Greek. I'm Neapolitan. No, yeah, sure. A real Neapolitan. You even look like a mandolin. But I still know you want something from me. So what's wrong with that? I want to live to a ripe old age. I need a favor. A little tiny favor. Yeah, you see? What do you need? Uh, a record of certain employees of a certain company. Uh -huh. Everything you can get on. Their habits, quirks, the works. <laughs> I'm surprised. You're talking old-fashioned. We don't classify people anymore. Not even whores and faggots. A company, no less. Yes, but the company we're talking about is different. We're talking security clearances. Oh. And what's the name of this uh, outfit? Sphinx. Hmm? Jack, do you know what this Sphinx is? Sure I do. They make science fiction weapons. Then you know also the defense ministry takes care of this, and not us. Are you going to tell me you don't have buddies in high places? No, oh, hell, what do you want from me? Do you expect me to steal files from the Ministry of Defense and just hand them over to you? Who spoke about that? I'd be happy with the photocopies. Did I ever tell you to stick it up your ass? <laughs> yeah, a lot of times, but I know better than to try it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Jack. Get me the Defense Department. Okay. Come on, wake up. What's going on around here? Simon! Come on, get with it. Professor. The minute I got your message, I came here as soon as I could. 
Why'd you wait for me? Stretch out on the floor. I got the key downstairs from the porter. He said, go on in. The minute I walked in the room, some guy jumped me. Uh, ooh. It's pretty clear. Whoever broke in is trying to find something. Have a chance to look at his face? For a second, but I'd recognize him. I had a long scar here on his face. Just a kid, he came up to here. Oh, but I managed to tear his jacket off him. Let's see. <laughs> An egg and parmesan cheese. He's made it easy for us to identify him. <laughs> I'll bet he's sorry. Let's go hunt a fox or two. I can figure it was a jockey. The two ounces of parmesan cheese and a hard-boiled egg. Those are the time-honored ingredients of the so-called jockey's diet. Skinny little suckers, they make me sick. <laughs> ah, but what the hell. You lose two pounds a day and you still have energy. The important thing is always to have a supply on hand. If you don't have it when you need it, you can faint dead away. So our man is either a jockey or an Italian chicken. There's dozens of jockeys around here. How will we know which one it is? Listen and learn, dumb nuts. If he's on that diet, it means he has to race no more than three days from now. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a police record, too. And of course, you got to look at him. You said he had a scar. With a little luck, we'll nab him. Let's get to work. Hello. I know pretty girls like to keep people waiting for them, but uh, this time you've gone too far. Listen, this time it's okay. I've got a horse that'll solve all my problems. That turkey. <laughs> You're pretty funny. Listen. You get me that money by tomorrow, or you got trouble, big trouble. Ask her for binoculars. Would you mind? Not at all. <laughs> He's gorgeous. Hey, Simon, would you take a look? Oh, it's him. I can tell by the scar on his forehead. Are you sure? Yeah. Give the lady back the binoculars. Thanks, Sunshine. We'll have a talk with him right now. No. What the hell was that? Nothing, nothing. Was it a bolt of lightning? It was murder, not an act of God. I could have sworn it was a bolt of lightning. Did you see that? It was murder, Simon. Murder. 
They got themselves three birds with one stone. To begin with, they tested it at high and low power. Second, they got rid of a man who knew too much. And third, they informed us it's not a joke. There has been an intervention from the head of state. He feels that the weapon has uh, certain characteristics that can only be defined as excessively dangerous. An infernal risk factor is what he called it. No one is more aware of that than us. The president wishes to know what could happen should the weapon fall into the wrong hands. Uh, don't you think we've asked ourselves that question? Uh, you see, the conclusion was this. A suggestion to destroy the prototype and to abandon the project in its entirety. Don't you think you could have told us all this before? We wouldn't have built the uh, rifle. The company won't lose any money on this. The contract will be honored. <laughs> That's not the point. I can understand your annoyance. Your weapon was a jewel, a real showpiece. <laughs> Let's not talk about it anymore. We realize the President's noble reasons behind his decision, and therefore we'll destroy the prototype. Our orders are to take possession of the rifle and all the necessary blueprints, and to see through their total destruction. So we must hand it over then. When? Within 10 days. What is it, Mr. Cristiani? Something wrong? I'm a little tired, that's all. The USR has kept us all extremely busy over the last few days. I can understand Christiani's reaction. That rifle was his creation. But like the man said, ours is not to reason why. <laughs> or something like that. The military can do damn little when the politicians start yapping. Ah, it's a beautiful day today. You really think so? Sure I do. Well, the situation is deteriorating. In 10 days, our heads will roll. Ah, a reason for optimism. Uh, what optimism? You said 10 days? That's a lot of time. No problem, believe me. Mr. Clemeny, this is Mr. Guidi's car. Ah, pretty nice. It's at your disposal. Thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. White whale, I've spotted two more eels on your tail. What should I do about it, huh? Keep a sharp eye out. Let's see what they want. Intervene only if it's necessary. Got it, okay. I can see you. Okay, I'll make a move back. Okay, small fry, they're closing in. Stay where you are and don't try anything funny.
How about trying a couple of little love taps on his rear? Thank you, Chief. It'd be a pleasure. Knock again. Could be you didn't hear the first one. I hear you, White Whale. I'm set and ready to blow his house down. We need air tanks. You're not gonna dive down there, are you? Not me. You are. Hmm. You know, the chairman's having an affair with his secretary. Three gays on the board. That seems normal. What the hell do you need these for? Did you ever hear of a private eye giving secrets away? And have you ever heard of an assistant police chief arrested for revealing police information? Tony, it isn't police information. It comes from the ministry. And that makes it a federal offense. Ah. Here's our electronics engineer. And this pretty young thing is his lady friend. The real mystery about this operation and all preceding ones is why? Why do I let you talk me into putting my ass on the line for you? Why should an ugly fat man with a beard hold such power over a nice guy like me? Why?
Excuse me. May I help you? Yes. Um, is this a Cora? No, it's a Parisio. But even the experts sometimes are wrong. Do you like it? <laughs> yes, but I don't like the experts. They cost more than the paintings. <laughs> Mr. Clementi. Ah. I didn't expect to find you here. What a coincidence, showing up in the same art gallery. No coincidence. Edith is my fiance. Hi, darling. Incredible. Incredible that we're engaged? No. Uh, I never expected to find Mr. Nardi here. What's Yesterday, so strange? Yesterday we didn't know each other, and now we've met twice. It's a small world. Didn't you know? I'm sorry I can't stick around. I just dropped by for a fast hello. Too bad. I was hoping to have a little chat with you. Uh, invite Mr. Clementi to your place by the sea. He can have lunch with us. Good idea, darling. <laughs> Are you free at lunch, Mr. Clementi? Free as a bird. Good. Come, I'll show you. I have a kind of cottage just outside Torre Paolo. It's uh, easy to find the street. Via delle Mimosa 12. You can discuss art with Edith. It'd be a pleasure. Uh, isn't that... Uh... Yes. It's our chief of security, Fred. After what happened, Mr. Cristiani has decided to take certain precautions. It creates no end of difficulties, but I suppose it's necessary. For instance, he's put me and De Croon under escort in the company's armored car. Uh, you see what things have come to? Hmm. Uh, how long have you known each other? We first met a year ago. It was love at first sight. Now, after a year of being together, we've decided to get married. Congratulations. She's a beautiful woman and a great hostess. Thank you. At any rate, I don't believe your visit to her gallery was pure coincidence. <laughs> it was no coincidence. Look here. This is the business card of Edith's gallery. And the phone number was written in a certain address book. They look as if they'd been underwater. Yeah, you're right. They were in a car that went into a sea off Cape Treche, along with two men who were trying to feed me to the fish. But what's Edith got to do with this business? Yeah, that's a good question. I'd be interested in finding out, too. As soon as you're gone, Edith is going to have a lot of explaining to do. But you better be convincing. Well, thank her for her hospitality. And tell me what she says. I'm curious. I wouldn't mind finding out what's going on. Let's get going, but not too far. Pull over once you're outside the main gate. I put a microphone under the table. What the hell were you doing with a blackmailer and a gangster? Does it occur to you that I might be the one who's being blackmailed? I can't believe you. You're nothing but a slut. I never tried to fool you into thinking that I was a saint before we met. Those men got their hands on some photographs of me. And your life as a tramp is all behind you now. So you sold me out. And you claim that you love me. I do love you. I did everything I could to avoid hurting you. It's my own fault. I told details of my work, secrets, to a spy. That's not fair. 
Who are they? Tell me who they are. No, I can't. They'll kill me. They'll kill me. I'll kill you if you don't tell me. All right. All right. Only one thing. Whatever happens to me, just remember that I'll always love you. Always. Tell me their names. Please. Their names are... <gasps> hey, what's going on? I, I heard what sounded like a champagne cork. Well, they opened one bottle too many. Let's go. Get the car ready. I'll call the police. You're going to call the police? Never mind the sarcasm, Simon. Go. Via della Mimose 12, Torre Paola. There are two corpses there, and they're dead. I can't believe that Nadia's no longer with us. I feel like I'm going crazy. These deaths, in my opinion, mean that we can no longer keep the situation a secret. We don't know that the two murders have anything to do with the theft. The newspaper spoke of a crime of passion. That's only a bone that the police threw to the reporters. They haven't got a single clue. They're on the wrong track, so we can work on the right one. And the right one leads straight back here, is that it? Probably. Well, that being the case, what do you suggest? Now, we don't jump the gun. Now, we sit back and wait and see what happens. My private line. It might be the blackmailer. All right. Answer it. That way we'll find out. <laughs> Hello? You called in a detective. That wasn't smart. Uh, just to carry out negotiations with you. We thought that an expert would make things easier. There are no negotiations for the time being. Not till we have the weapon in our hands, intact and in perfect working order. I don't understand. I assure you, the weapon is in perfect working order. Unless, of course, you yourself damaged it when you took it away. Don't play games with me, Cristiani. You still have the homing device. I repeat, the weapon in your possession is complete. You're wasting my time. We know as much about that rifle as you do. If you don't make a deal, you're going to have hundreds of deaths on your conscience. The answer is no. You will never have the device. Never. All right, then. We'll simply use the rifle as a conventional weapon. For example, we could knock off the top of a skyscraper or take out a bridge at peak rush hour. You wouldn't dare. Friend, I think you had plenty of proof that we're not kidding around. It'll take time. 
It's not an easy decision to make. I can't give you an answer just like that without thinking about it. All right. Talk to your detective. But make it fast. Next time I call, I want an answer. My head feels like it's going to burst. It never rains, but it pours. Theft, murder, blackmail. All I need now is for the police to come bursting in on us. Ah, speak of the devil. Come in. Mr. Cristiani, the police are here. Detective Caruso wants to speak to you. Hold everything. I want to know where Jack Clemente is. Hi there. Here I am. Am I in trouble with the law? Let's begin by saying that you have a lot of explaining to do. You refused to stop when ordered to by a police patrol on the Chircheo Road. Well, I was sort of in a hurry. I bet you were. After killing two people, Jack. Really? Uh, wait a minute. Have you got the nerve to say you weren't at Nardi's villa? Uh, well, I was there. Only I left before the shooting. The newspaper didn't specify the cause of death. How did you know they were shot? Because I went back and found them there dead. It's a long story. I... Oh, go right ahead. I've got lots and lots of time. You don't believe it? No. I just want to know what you were doing out at the dead people's beach house. Uh, the two corpses invited me for lunch. Don't make me laugh. A guy takes his chick to the beach for a couple of hours and invites you along, too? Anyway, the table was only set for two. Yeah. But she served us lunch and then went outside to catch some sun. She was dieting. A pity that there are no witnesses. There was one. Mr. Cristiani, could you call Fred, please? Get Fred in here. Who's Fred? Chief of security here. I saw you at the beach house. Hold on. You asked for me, Mr. Cristiani? No, Fred, I was the one who asked for you. Detective Caruso here wants to know who was at the beach house when you took Nardi there. Yeah, sure. A young woman was there. Anyone else? Mr. Clemente. How do you know? Did you go inside? No, but I recognized him right away. And I knew he was going to be there. How did you know? Dr. Nardi told me when I took him home. He said Mr. Clemente would be joining them for lunch. Satisfied? Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Anytime, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Cristiani. Uh, thanks again. OK. So you had a reason for being there. But I'm still waiting for you to explain what you're doing here. Nothing ever happens in this part of the world. Nothing. And since you arrived, four people have died. And that goes for you gentlemen as well. I want to know what Clemente's doing here, and I'm not leaving until I've heard the truth. Can't tell you. Sorry. I'm only trying to keep you out of harm's way. This business is a lot more complicated than you think. And I'm telling you, I'm staying here. I hope you've made up your minds. Well, we really haven't had enough time to discuss it. Uh, why don't you call back later? No way, friend. Now, if the answer is no, we don't have to limit ourselves to skyscrapers and bridges. We can find ways to be even more effective. In case we decide to accept, what would you want us to do? Do you accept? First, answer my question. Delivery operations will begin in exactly one hour at 5 o'clock. One of the men will bring the homing device in your van. Rome license plate 59849. Ah. He'll leave the plant and take the road to Sperlonga. He'd better be alone. He'll receive further instructions on the van's radio telephone. How will you call? We know the phone number, don't worry. What will happen to our man? He'll stay with us until we're sure that the homing device is in perfect working order. In other words, you're going to want a device and a hostage as well. 
Put it any way you want. You've got 30 seconds to answer. Very well, I agree. Five o'clock. Oh, and don't forget, your man comes alone. If he doesn't, he gets killed. Remember what happened to your friends at Torre Powell. I must go. No, no. As the inventor of that weapon, the moral responsibility is mine. Excuse me, but I'm paid for this kind of work. Here we are talking about it. But I haven't really decided yet whether or not I'm going to give them the homing device. You have to. We can't risk the eventuality of a massacre. And that's our only chance to get a good look at these people's faces. Will someone please tell me what the hell is going on? I told you it's best that you don't know. But if you insist, sit down and fasten your seatbelt. Following the plan we agreed on. I'm about to take the turn off for Terracina. Good. Once you're through Terracina, take the Sperlunga Road. Stop the van at the mouth of the first tunnel. Walk to the middle of the tunnel and wait. Someone will pick you up. Oh, by the way, your friend who's following you, tell him to back off. Otherwise, we'll break his kneecaps. Ah, the zebra stripes. Why didn't I get it sooner? Ha! You there? Yeah. They're smart. They know what they're doing. Yeah, the meeting is set, so I don't know where they're picking me up. Don't follow me. Got that? Only now, I remember what the name was of our friend on the telephone. Zebra. Zebra? That's the one. Don't forget that name, boy. Zebra.
Where's Zebra? Well, well. Look what the wind blew in. Jack Clement. <laughs> so you're the snoop they put on our tail, huh? You recognized my voice after all these years. You even remembered my battle tag. I remember because Zebra makes me think of convicts in the striped jackets they wore. You know, those pretty black and white ones. <laughs> oh, you're a riot. Always kidding around. <laughs> oh, my, my. We're going to have quite a little get-together. Here's another old buddy of yours just arrived. Trusty old Fred, I presume. <laughs> you know something? You're not as dumb as I figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, before this fight's all over, you're gonna find out just how dumb you are. It's enough. Playtime's over, Jack. I hope you've got what I'm looking for. Right here. Engineer? Check this out. Right. There's no doubt. It's the missing piece. Does it work? Yes. <laughs> they did the right thing sending you. That way we kill two birds with one stone. Don't get too cocky. Sometimes there's a third bird you gotta worry about. This little toy works only if I want it to. And what's that supposed to mean? The operative code has been changed. Ah. May I? So they got cute. Too bad, fatso. But I'm gonna blow your guts all over the place for this. Not with that TV set. It's not exactly bang, you're dead. The code has been changed, and only I know how to use it. I had to protect myself before coming here, right? <laughs> I work for an insurance company, and this new code is my life insurance policy. If you want to use the microwave, I have to be the chef. This guy's pretty good with words. Why don't we just blow him away and quit wasting time? Relax, Fred. Don't be a jerk. I want proof that this weapon is in perfect working order. I'll give you the coordinates of a target you can hit from here. Something the USR should be able to do. Are you ready for that? I'm ready to blast anything you want, but I'm warning you. No test against human targets. Oh, don't worry yourself. I just want to give everybody a little demonstration that we can strike where, when, and how I want. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just trying to figure out what you got in mind now that you have this weapon. Yeah. What could Secret Service Colonel Raoul Bresky, court-martial for treason, want with this little baby? Revenge? Or uh, is it the loot? Who are you working for now? I work independent, good buddy. My flag is a bankroll. You know, paid to the bearer on demand. If it's the money you're after, we can cut a deal. I told you I'm working for an insurance company. Well, in this very special situation, they can be generous. I'm the one who decides who pays and when. Now it's your turn to do your part. The ball's in your court. If there has to be a bloodbath, it'll be on your conscience, chum. As you can see, the target is completely deserted. They do it for security reasons. So there's no way you're going to hit anyone, even by mistake. You said you had the plans and coordinates of the target?
Okay, I programmed in the operating instructions, and now it's set to home in on the exact position of the place where the target is located. May I? Damn right. Go ahead. As far as I know, the concentration of ultrasound should have hit the target at the same time I pressed the trigger. If it's as fast as you say it is, we should have heard something by now. I'm not exactly a patient man. Still no lead on the mysterious incident involving the Statue of Justice not far from the District Attorney's office. The words assassination attempt are being used, although with understandable caution. No one can explain how the attack was launched here in a corner of the courthouse, a building that is heavily guarded day and night. If the weapon that decapitated the Statue of Justice is man-made, it raises an obvious and very disturbing question. Is there any form of defense against such a weapon? What are we going to do, Mr. Christiani? This can't go on. We have to release Caruso from his oath of silence. Right now. It's a question everyone's asking. If this news gets out, we'll be sentencing Clemente to death. Without saying that the authorities are also following the matter with a great deal of it. The problem creating most of the fear is whether this episode should be considered an isolated event or will it happen again. Just out of curiosity, when did you first start to suspect me? From the beginning. <laughs> That's a load of bull. Well, it didn't take very much. The videotape was good enough to fool the Sphinx executives, but not me. Okay, then. Come on. Tell me where I went wrong. In front of the camera, you moved like a very bad actor. You can forget the Oscar. Fred, open up. I want to have a few words with our guest. I am sorry to keep you locked up like this, but you're very precious to me. Fred. Jack's a friend. I brought you this, front page two. I'm sure you'll understand why I don't want to open negotiations just yet. With a toy like that in my hands, it's like having open credit. I mean, who needs Lloyd's anymore? I have my own mint, my own money machine. Any request I make has to be accepted by any government. They can't afford to refuse. Every man of power will feel threatened personally. His defenses are useless. The king is dead. Know what I mean? The only dead thing around here will be you. I say we get rid of him before he tries something funny on us. We need him alive. He's the only one who knows the code. Then let me give him something to think about. It wouldn't take long for me to get the information out of no, him. No, Fred, I know better. Jack isn't the talking kind. Besides, I need him in excellent condition to do a delicate job. Here, read this carefully. <laughs> hey, 
hitting the Ministry of Justice. Got you some major publicity. What else do you want? Read on. The President's message to the Italian people. He does it every year, so what? What's going through your sick brain? Not so sick. You said yourself, the people of Italy. With a shot like this, I've got them all just where I want them. Damn bastard, you're not counting on me, are you? No way. But I am counting on you. Because I've got you just where I want you to. Not this time around. Look. Oh, I mean, sons of bitches. Go. Let go, you. You two know each other? Hmm. Professor. As you can see, you're in no position to say no. This is agony. Clementa's assistant should have called by now. What on earth could have gone wrong? I don't know. Fred has disappeared, too. No one knows where he went. It's terrible. Fred's gone. What is it? The general's on line two, sir. I told him you were at a meeting, but he said it was urgent. I'll take it. Hello, hello, General. Hello, Mr. Cristiani. I'll get right to the point, sir. I'm feeling just a bit uneasy. I happen to have the report of what happened at the Ministry of Justice right here in front of me. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the newspapers. <laughs> I've seen them, yes. Very strange. Can't say I understand what it's all about. If it weren't for the fact that I know that the USR is safely locked up in your vault, I'd be blaming it for the attack. I don't know of any weapon capable of hitting its target without leaving a trace, a well-defended target, impossible to reach with a conventional weapon. Did that thought cross your mind? Uh, no. I can't say it did. Anyway, I figured we'd all prefer to feel more at ease. I've been thinking about the President's point of view. He's right. He's absolutely right. The weapon has to be destroyed. If it got into the wrong hands, all hell could break loose. We'd like to come and pick the baby up tomorrow. We all agree with you. Very well, General. We'll expect you tomorrow. Goodbye. How can we do it? How can we do what? Tomorrow, when the General gets here and asks for the USR. Who cares about tomorrow? We'll all be in jail. Uh, wait. All we've been looking at is our shots of criminals. Maybe we should look uh, elsewhere. For someone who moves well on our side of the barricade. One of our guys? Why not? You've never heard of a black sheep? Anyway, I didn't say a cop. I was thinking more of someone in the Secret Service. They move in these circles. They're interested in modern weapons. I don't know, sir. What we're doing really isn't legal. You want to take on the Secret Service? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll take the responsibility. See if you can come up with a zebra in there somewhere. Yes, sir. Here we go. These are the names of the guys still in the Secret Service. Try the retired guys. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I think I'm right. Who else but an 07 could have known about that damned weapon? There he is, Zebra. Oh, damn his eyes. How the hell am I supposed to look for him if he's in Venezuela? Do you remind our audience that we'll be...
Broadcasting tonight live at 8.30 from the Quirinale Palace in Rome, the President of our Republic will be delivering his annual address to the nation. And now for a look at the other programs for the evening. What you want to do is impossible. The president's message has been taped. Wrong. It used to be taped. Now it goes out live. More of a bang to it. Come and see. Everything's ready. Now let's see what you can really do. Who knows? If everything goes well, I may even offer you a job in my organization. You still have time to stop all this. Why don't we just sit down in front of the TV and listen to the president's message like the folks at home? The good folks at home have a surprise in store for them. This is going to be the greatest show on earth. In a few minutes, we'll be broadcasting the President's annual message to the people of Italy from the Quirinel Palace. This is the detailed plan of the Hall of Tapestries. The little square here indicates the exact position, to within millimeters, of where the presidential chair will be placed. All you have to do is adjust the homing device, pull the trigger. No backing up. You have no choice. You miss the target, and your friend pays for the mistake. First him, then you. Hmm? Hmm. Get on with it. Hurry up, Jack. Time's up. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Hurry up, Jack. We haven't got much time. President, everything is ready. When you wish, we may start. The red light on the camera will tell you when we're on the air. Fine. Thank you. Start in tight on the face. As you know, when the tone sounds, it means that the shot has been fired. I'm sorry. I can't pull the trigger. I have nothing against that man. Look, either it's the president or him. The choice is yours. Why don't you do it yourself? It'd be different for you. You'd enjoy it. What do I have to do? The grip is the same as the one on a normal machine gun. You have to hold it absolutely steady and keep your eye on the display screen. Now you pull the trigger gently, very gently. But I'm warning you, if you pull the trigger now, we're all dead. means I set the coordinates of this basement instead of the president's palace. 
Plus, I activated the auto-destruct function. This historic achievement It'll come right back where it started. In other words, this rifle is like a boomerang. Spirit of 76 here. Uh, don't worry about that. It's just a flesh wound. It'll get better. Right if you get work. This way, please, Colonel Brosky. We've got a lot of explaining to do. Oh, I forgot to tell you something, Zebra. The auto-destruct device doesn't exist. I made it up. Not bad, huh? <laughs> By the way, Tony, how'd you find this place? Well, when Simon, that French friend of yours, told me Zebra's name, I had a word with the computer. Ah, then they are useful, huh? You don't get it. I'm talking about the computer I have in my head. It told me that when Zebra was in the Secret Service, he had a lady friend who was an actress. To make a long story short, this villa is hers. Hey, good thinking, Tony. Tell me, Jack, what would happen if I pulled this trigger? Well, in that direction is the palace. Uh, oh. And over there is the Vatican. You'd waste the folk. Let me ask you a favor. Try to be there when they destroy this baby. Why? So you can write me about it. I want to know for sure. All right? Count on it. Quite a while to get home this time. It must have been a nice vacation for you. You're always catching I'm an impossible guest. No, you're the one who always complains. Nothing is ever right for you. <laughs> okay, now, what would you like for dinner tonight? I'm brave enough to face anything you cook. Mm -hmm. See? Nothing has changed. Madame, you're looking better all the time now that you're older. This one didn't have to come back at all. Now what? Remember that sea bass I took a picture of? Look at the enlargement. Isn't it sensational? Hey, it looks like someone we know. Ooh, it's Inspector Caruso. Hey, you got it. Oh, Professor. Mm. I'm going to make viennoise with pomme terre. That's the only dish that you know how to cook right. Only to be much better if you called it veal, cutlet, and potatoes. Got that? Some eyes are trying to tell me I'll never see another day. It's gonna be my darkest sunrise goes to my rose. Bob the skyline 
Shine rainbow, star shine rainbow. 